Okay, five breakthroughs in dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's uh, disease, 2025. We got five papers plus eight more recent papers and a couple old ones. These three are the leading, uh, six leading cause of death in the United States put together. My dad had Parkinson's disease. He was in the police force uh, all his life. He talked to everyone. You name it, he was politically involved. He talked to everyone in town. He knew everyone's job, what they did, everyone's name. Everyone knew my dad. He was a talker. The last three years of his life, the Parkinson's took his ability away to speak. Horrible. And then when he died, the last two weeks of his life, the muscles that swallow food stopped working. My mom had dementia, and her mom, my grandmother, had Alzheimer's. So this is something that affects me personally. Dementia is an umbrella term of disorders that damages brain cells, leading to a decline in mental abilities. It's not a normal part of aging. Okay, first paper. Says, the relationship between total cholesterol and dementia seems to be bidirectional. Basically what this is saying, and all of these will be in the description below, uh, so you can read them yourselves. It's saying that, basically it goes back to that cholesterol video I did with the 12.7, 12.8 million people, uh, where they said, as you get older, you live longer with higher cholesterol. Well, they're saying you don't want too high cholesterol in your midlife, but as you get older, you want your cholesterol to go up to prevent these diseases. Next one. Blood biomarker profiles in exceptional longevity. Comparison of centenarians and non-centenarians. Okay, it's a 35-year study. Basically, they're saying higher levels of total cholesterol in iron, I think it's normal, high iron, not high iron, uh, and lower levels of glucose, creatinine, uric acid, AST, GGT, alkaline phosphatase, lactic dehydrate, LDH, and total iron binding capacity were associated with people reaching 100 years old. Okay, moving along. Associations of metabolic syndrome, risk of dementia, a systemic review. The study found that metabolic syndrome is significantly associated with increased risk of dementia and cognitive impairment, each component potentially being a, a moderate factor. So, modifiable factor. I see people in their late teens with metabolic syndrome. It affects all ages. So, what do you think the odds are if someone in the early teens has it of getting dementia? They're going to be pretty high. Okay. Dietary sugar intake associated with the higher risk of dementia in community dwelling older adults. What does this say? Higher intake of total sugar, total calories from sugar is associated with the increased dementia risk in older adults. Among simple sugars, fructose, sweetened beverages, snacks, packaged desserts, overly processed foods, and sucrose, table sugar, and juices, desserts, Candies, uh, commercial cereals, it's associated with higher dementia risk. It's the last paper for dementia. Toxins are also associated with dementia and autoimmune disease. All right. Alzheimer's, the progressive neurodegeneration brain disorder, and the most common cause of dementia, memory loss and loss of other cognitive abilities, not part of normal aging. This is a genetic, uh, partly genetic. You have genes called APOE2, APO3, and APO4. You have two of them, one from your mother, one from your father. So some people have two E2s. Mother and father both had E2. They have a 5% chance of getting dementia. Some people have a father and mother with both had E4s given to them. They have a 90% chance of dementia. Here's the thing, and a lot of people don't seem to understand this. Your genes load the gun, but your diet and lifestyle pulls the trigger. So in other words, people, oh, I got bad genes. Yes, that's where you're born, but you can't override that with diet and lifestyle. This is proven in epigenetic studies.
not my opinion. Again, if I give you my opinion, I'm going to say, hey, this is my opinion. Okay. It's a 20 to 25 study, metabolic signature of insulin resistance and the risk of Alzheimer's. We've identified blood metabolite signature that reflect and may enhance our understanding of biological mechanics through which insulin resistance affects Alzheimer's disease. This one surprised me. It may surprise you. I think it will. Artificial light and neurodegeneration. Does light pollution impact development of Alzheimer's disease? This is very interesting. They looked at all the blood biomarkers and they found that artificial light uh, had a major impact. So try to dim the lights at night. Uh, unfortunately, the iridescent lights that we used to have that are no longer allowed to have, have were fine. The LED lights and everything that's new has caused problems. Fluorescent lights, they're supposedly working on better forms of these lights. Time will tell. And we're going to get to solutions and what you can do to have a better lifestyle and fix these things. Parkinson's, PD. Neurodegenerative brain disorders affects movement. Nerve cells in the substantia nigra get damaged and die, leading to a dopamine shortage. 70% of people with PD develop dementia. My father did never develop dementia. He was sharp. He couldn't talk. He could like moan and his wife understood him, but he could write uh, on a board. He could pick out numbers, letters. So not a normal part of aging. Low LDL cholesterol an increased risk of Parkinson's disease. I'm going to cover that one in a second. Parkinson's disease associated with neural inflammation in the brain, which we understand. Now, my father, this is personal, this is not science, had allergic reactions to seven statins that he tried. One statin he took first time, went to bed, he woke up in the morning, he passed out. Luckily, he fell back on the bed and he was okay. But his, his cardiologist insisted he take a statin. Well, he was actually a healthy guy. He was a police officer, as I said. He was fine throughout his entire life. Then all of a sudden, he went on a statin. He started developing a belly, insulin resistance. He started getting uh, AFib. And that ended up leading him to a pacemaker. And that led him to getting Parkinson's. So that's not science. I'm just telling you. All right. What can we do about this? Be healthy. So let me run through these papers real quick. And then I'll show you on the board. Scientists discover how a high fat ketogenic diet can keep the brain young. Study found that female mice with the APOE4 gene that I talked about right here showed improved gut and brain health on a high fat, low carb diet. I'm not fond of my studies, but something like this, they have to look somewhere. Okay. Clinical benefits of exogenous ketosis in adults with disease and systemic review. Now a couple interesting ones. Exploring the impact on coffee consumption. They figured out coffee consumption regulated inflammation and gut health. It helped even help bone formation. So to be clear, it helped remove inflammation, it improved gut health, and improved bone form. Now we're talking about one cup a day. We're not talking about massive amounts. And this one too, 2025, caffeinated coffee consumption or abstinence to reduce atrial fibrillation. Conclusion, one cup a day, a regular, I see people drinking cups that are like this, that's not a cup, a cup. One cup a day, less AFib than no coffee, okay? 
How many years have we been, and my father was told this, can't drink coffee, no, 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 no. And now they say, oh, we made a mistake. All right, well, so what can we do? This is the fun part that I like. Be healthy, lower your omega-6. I'm not talking about, the, like the walnuts have omega-6. And some people have taken this way too far. Extra virgin olive oil has omega-6s in them. Natural omega-6s are fine found in food. Let's not get carried away with this. We're talking about man-made omega-6s. Sugar has to be reduced. We have enough papers there. Processed foods have to be reduced. They have both of these. All right? Exercise. Weightlifting is best. Even three pounds, as I said in the video, the 101-year-old woman, she lifts every day uh, three-pound weights. Sleep is crucial. I could do a whole video on this. Sauna, they now have new information saying a hot bath at 104 degrees, and I heard that's hot. I, I don't measure my, my water temperature. Is as good as a sauna. So you don't need to buy a sauna. You can take a hot bath. Lighting, try to not be in bright lights at nighttime. Um, the less light you're around, the better. More extra virgin olive oil, organic, always. Anytime you use an oil or a coffee, it should always be organic. All right, supplements. Omega-3, fatty acids, creatine, phosphatidylserine, it's magnificent, ketones, or MCT oil. Now, if you've never taken MCT oil, taking too much will give you disaster pants. You don't want that. Start with a teaspoon. But Dr. Mary Newport in 2008, she's a medical doctor. She's going through the research because her husband had dementia, Alzheimer's. She's like, I got to do something. He was, in, he was in pretty bad shape. So she found the research and she figured out it was in coconut oil. And she started giving her husband coconut oil and he got better, like a lot better. So she kept on giving him coconut oil. And she realized uh, MCT oil was a better option than coconut oil. And ketones, these are, I don't want to give too much advice right here because I could do a whole video on these. What else can you do? Lotus lithium, glycerine. This is an amino acid. Um, I think it's going to be, I'm going to do a video on this, I think. This and taurine. Phenomenal. All right. Have a happy Thanksgiving. All disease comes from cellular dysfunction. For Thanksgiving, free cell blueprint because all disease comes from cellular dysfunction. It's shown, it shows up in the free cell blueprint. For Thanksgiving, I'm giving that away. I appreciate all of you. To get that, reach out, go to my website or email directly. Have a great holiday for those who celebrate Thanksgiving. See you next week.